Hey guys, Jared Russell here. I'm here in Chiang Mai, Thailand for the Chiang Mai SEO conference. And I decided to kidnap some of the speakers and some of the attendees, drag them back to my apartment here and interview them just so you guys get some exclusive content. So let's get straight into it. Enjoy. Hey guys, Darrell Russell here. Welcome back to another episode of The Lion's Deal Show. In this episode, I'm sitting down with Jared Spilak, if I'm saying your name correctly. Yeah. Spilak, okay. Thank you. And uh, we're talking about how he's 20 years old and he's went out there and built up a monthly recurring revenue now of $20,000, um, which is pretty epic. And he also went out there and got three new clients in the past week. And we're going to walk through exactly how he's done that, how he acquires his clients, and how it's almost, not quite, but very almost automated for using Upwork. So most people think that if you go on Upwork and you get paid like two, three dollars an hour, he's actually going out there and get in all the way up to $3,000 a month clients from Upwork. We're gonna break down the process step by step, how exactly he gets clients. So let's dive into the interview and enjoy. All right, hey man, thank you for joining me on the show today. It's very awesome to have yeah, no, you here. I'm excited to be here. So for anyone that doesn't know who you are yet, can you give like an introduction as to like who you are, like what it is that you do? Yeah, sure. No, I'd be more surprised if anyone did know who I am. <laughs> so uh, you, you know. never know. <laughs> yeah. So uh, name's Jared Spuak. So I do uh, client SEO. Uh, that's pretty much all I do. Don't really do any uh, affiliate stuff or any just just clients. I've been trying to. Uh, you know, I started out freelancing, working with some agencies, and now I'm really kind of focused on actually growing my own agency. Okay. So that's kind of been my focus for the past, you know, like six, seven months. And okay. so that's the kind of the direction I've taken recently. So one of the reasons I was interested in chatting is I've seen you in the groups and before. I've seen you in our different communities and whatnot. And you've made a post recently, and actually my team noticed it and pulled it out to me, was that like you're 20 years old, right? Yep and you just hit $20,000 a month for current revenue from your agency. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. So it was actually um, Tuesday, so three days ago. Uh, we, That's awesome. We, I finally closed the deal, and that put me over the, the $20,000 mark. It's honestly something that I didn't think I'd hit for a long time. You know, I, yeah. I have my own like revenue goals, and I, I, it was like March of next year that I thought that I'd be able to possibly hit this. But yeah, it's, you know, it's great. No, that's really cool, man. How long have you been doing the agency? So, try, trying to actually grow and scale, the past two years I've actually been focusing on actually trying to do this, but I've been okay. doing you know, the marketing type stuff for about six years, but then for the past two I've been actually serious about it. You've been doing marketing stuff for six years? Yep, so, so when I was 14, I was actually uh, starting college when I was 15, and I had to pay for it myself. So I needed to learn how to make money. So pretty much like everyone typed into Google, how do you make money online? Found that, you know, like really, you know, that BS like surveys and stuff. Then I actually Because they get paid $50 when you sign up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, and then, you know, after a week you've made like 50 cents. Yeah. And then from there, I found uh, Hire Writers, if you're familiar with that site. So I was yeah. actually writing on there, you know, making nothing. Writing for my PBNs. Yeah. <laughs> so that actually introduced to me because people would be like, hey, I want this like SEO content. And he's at yeah. like this keyword density. So I was like, you know, what is all this kind of stuff? And I'm, I'm a very like research based person. So I started looking into it, probably found Moz 101 for SEO. You're still 14 at this time? Uh, yeah, 14, 15, somewhere around okay. there. Um, found like the Moz SEO 101 guide, started to kind of learn that, started to get a lot more into marketing. I knew that I wanted to go into business for college, but I didn't really know where it was. So I was like, oh yeah, this marketing stuff, let me kind of look into it. And so after there, I just kind of, you know, focus on marketing. It wasn't really a focus on SEO for a couple years after that. Um, okay. but it was something like the whole digital side was what was really intriguing to me. Can I ask, like, what is your drive? Like you're 14 years old and you're just Googling how to make money online. Like what makes a 14 year old go and Google how to make money? Um, so part of it, I, I've very, always been very driven to kind of like make money and okay. I don't really know why I was like, you know, 13, like I, I want a job when I was eight, I was like, oh yeah, I want to start my own business. It was very, you know, I don't, I don't know if there's anything that's really like kept me driven. It's just how I've always naturally been. Okay. That I just, you know, I want to, I want to grow something. I want to have my own thing. Anytime I've ever worked anywhere, I, I've always like put way more time into my own thing. Whenever I had other jobs, my freelancing stuff, I'd always be working on every single second that I could hmm. because that's what I was loving doing. You just enjoy yeah. the process. Is it something like your parents or like they like business owners or something like that? No, which is it's it's a question that I get asked quite a bit. Like you know, uh, are your are your parents you know do what do yeah. they do? And they're they're very risk conservative, I guess. Like they would never like doing something like this is very outside their element. You know, they both have, you know, their own things. You know, they both uh, work for other companies. They're not very, um, 
you know, me, me doing this is very scaring, scared for them because they don't want me to you know, fail and, and you know, not have anything. So they're very sure. uh, risk advertive. Oh, it's really interesting where that sort of money focus came from, which is a really good trait, by the way. <laughs> I think most people should have that. So you got into SEO, you were like 14, 15 maybe at this point. Yeah. Um, where did you go from there? How did you end up running the agency? Yeah, sure. So um, when I was... When I was uh, 17, I still wanted to work for other companies. It wasn't for a long okay. time that I was really sure that I wanted to have my own thing. So I was actually hired by a local real estate corporation to do marketing. It was my first real marketing job that wasn't just freelancing. And the freelancing stuff I do was really, it wasn't very quality work, it wasn't a whole lot of pay. A lot of the times it wasn't really like paid work. I would just be doing it for to be able to do it. Sure. Um, so when I was doing like the corporate stuff, you know, I really thought, you know, I'm gonna move up in this company, it's really gonna be something I'm doing, and I really just couldn't stand it. I was always trying to be like, okay, I'm going to set my own processes. Here's how I'm, I'm going to scale. And I didn't feel like I was really going anywhere. I was just so much more interested in the freelancing stuff and getting my own clients that, um, you know, I'd literally be working at my desk. And so I worked at, on uh, four different laptops when I was there. Um, at once? Yeah. Like, yeah, it, I had, I had uh, <laughs> three laptops and a desktop. Okay. So what I would do, usually have doing is there'd be work on all of them. One of them would also have YouTube playing in the background with my earphones in, and the other one also have you know, any freelancing stuff that I had going. So I was you know, working on multiple things at the same time because that's just what I loved doing the entire time. Okay. So when I was 18, that's when I uh, finished college. I only got an associate's degree, so I was you know, in and out two years. Um, and then after that, I decided I wanted to leave that because there was actually an SEO agency that offered me you know, an hourly like, full-time position as a contractor. And so it was making over double the pay of what I was doing right there. It was a lot more security and I was able to kind of do that, actually do the SEO that I was doing that I wanted to do with this agency as well as also still be able to do my freelance stuff. And then from there, just working with the other agencies just got me really ambitious to kind of have my own thing. That's cool, man. So from the age of like 15 to like 18, which is not that long ago actually, um, you started learning SEO from like malls and stuff and you did a little bit of freelance and then you kind of work for a couple of different companies, right? Yeah. How did you learn the SEO initially to have the confidence to go out there and get like a job doing it for people? So I think it was just something that I just decided to do. So I'm not a very like sociable person. I'm not very, you know, I'm not very out there. Like I could never cold call someone. You know, that scares the crap out of me. Yeah. I could never do that. Um, but I would um, go on Craigslist. And under like the gig section, people would be like, hey, I need someone to do this for me, I'd do that for me. So I would just be like, you know, whatever, I'd go out and I'd meet them at like the local Barnes and Noble or, you know, I'm kind of near like the downtown area where I live. So okay. sometimes we'd be at like a restaurant or whatever. And it would just be, you know, connecting with them, you know, talking to them in person, you know, just understanding their needs a little bit more. And so that's where I kind of like learned how to talk with people and I felt like I could actually, you know, go out there and, uh, you know, I gained a, a solid amount of sales skills during that process without really realizing that at the time. Sure. And yeah. then from there, just, you know, hey, I need marketing work and I'm trying to start this thing. Wouldn't even charge people. I did, had no idea what I was doing. And uh, yeah, I guess that's kind of how I started getting that kind of confidence. No, dude, I love the hustle. I think a lot of guys like us, like entrepreneurial type guys, um, you kind of notice it early on where they're doing stuff like selling sweets or candy at school and little things like that. That's really cool. So. How did you go out of your own? You had the job, did you quit and just like, screw these guys, I'm gonna do it myself? Or did you slowly build it up on the side? How does it work? Yeah, sure. So, so when I was uh, working for that corporation, I, uh, I was still freelancing on the side, but it was never okay. something that I felt as though that I would really be able to take onto my own thing. So for most of the time that I was freelancing, I was only charging $5 an hour. Wow, okay. I had no idea the value of SEO. I had no idea <laughs> what people paid for this kind of How stuff. How many hours are you working, roughly? Uh, for the freelance stuff, maybe 15, 20 hours a week. Okay. So wasn't really making a whole lot of money. It'd be cool when I would get like, you know, paid like $500 a month kind of doing what I was doing. It yeah. Was, you know, it was really cool. And then, you know, cause I tried to, I'd be like, hey, you know, $10 an hour, a lot of people would be like, no, no, no thanks. And I wasn't that good at selling what I was doing either. Yeah. Uh, so I really wasn't getting that much stuff. So kind of like once that agency actually offered me, uh, you know, significantly higher what I was making from that corporation is when I was able to kind of like feel confident to kind of uh, go out on my own. Um, so you work for the agency, you kind of saw like, holy shit, these guys are actually making some fucking money. Like you saw like it actually, like it actually works. And were they any good at what they did? Uh, so I still do work with them. So you don't I don't need to name them. Just yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, so they get results, but the okay. way that they do things is very different from the way I do things. 
In what way? Uh, so they, so I'm, I'm getting more, in, more into like the outreach type stuff and actually building more brands and like, you know, I really don't pay attention to rankings anymore for my clients. It's hey, this is their traffic gain again. This is the benefit. This is the ROI. And you know, they're a lot less ROI focused than I personally am. Okay. Uh, and so you know, kind of from there, I realized that of the agencies that I work for, either you know, like more full time. There's a couple other agencies that I work with. I didn't really want to work for another agency. I wanted to start my own thing because I didn't feel like there was anything out there that was really what I wanted it to be. So I wanted to build my own. Sure. So you did you leave the agency or did you kind of build it at the same time as yeah, you're still there? So kind of cut back on some of the work. So I'm a very driven person to like, I was working like 60, 80 hours a week. That, that's a normal work week for me, 60, 80 nice. hours. So I'd be working, you know, 30 hours for them, doing my own stuff. But as soon as, you know, as my own stuff started to scale, I started to scale back what I was doing with them. I started off gotcha. with about 30 to 40 hours a week with them. Even right now, I was still putting, you know, 10, 15 with them. But, you know, things are not going to be continuing with them for very much longer because I need to you know, that 10, 15 hours could be doing me a whole lot more with my own stuff as much as I enjoy working with them. Yep. You know, it's just uh, the scalability of my own business is hindered by me doing that kind of work. Yeah, absolutely. So when did you start this agency? Like what sort of age were you? Um, when I started with this agency or when I started my own? When you, when you like started your own and as you were leaving those guys? Yeah, so 19, I think. Okay, so about a year ago, yeah. maybe over that. Cool. How did you, like you're 19 years old, like I know for me when I spoke to my first clients, they're like, are you still in school? Like asking me questions like this. How did you go out there at 19 years old and like get clients to pay you like, yeah, sure. decent money? So one of the things that I don't typically do is, so I don't typically get asked my age anymore. Okay. Um, I think I look old enough now that they just assume that I'm in my like, you know, you know, 20s, they're like, oh yeah, you're 22, 23. And I think that's, you know, they're typically okay with that. But you know, a couple of years ago it was like, yeah, are you like 12? <laughs> um, <laughs> So yeah. so yeah, so one of the things that's actually been super beneficial to me and that, that a lot of people hate is actually platforms like places like Upwork. So I figured out how to okay. utilize those platforms to gain you know, over 10 grand in my monthly recurring revenue is thanks to that. Really? So, and I, so typically this is uh, against their uh, stuff, so I can't say if I do or do not do it, uh, but you, you get on the phone with people and they'll typically let you build them directly. And they typically prefer to work that way. And Interesting. sometimes they'll just ask you, rather than you have to ask So them. what's the process? Are you going to Upwork, this, do you find jobs where people are posting saying, hey, like we want an SEO? So typically not anymore. I was for a while, but I have a profile and that's pretty well built that I just get pretty much 50 free leads a month. Basically you have a profile. People can invite you to their jobs that they post. Yep. So I'll get invited to like 50 jobs plus a month. And then out of those, maybe 10 of them will be qualified because you know sometimes you'll get like, increase my Amazon listings, I don't do that. So about 10 of them will be qualified. I'll get on the phone, pretty much all 10 of them, and then I'll do about two or three proposals, and typically I close both, all of them. So, because I, I really only like to get to the proposal stage, because I put in like six to eight hours worth of work into a proposal. Okay, wow, okay. <laughs> uh, so I want to make sure that they're all qualified, and I have a very high close rate when I get to proposals. That's awesome. So we'll go into in, in more detail after, but mm -hmm. when you started out especially then, how did you get, like you have like zero views, zero ratings on yep. Upwork? So that's when, so I was actually working on Upwork when I was working for that like $5 an hour. Okay. Um, so I, you know, I was just on there working for like $5 an hour. I was pretty much hired to do the type of work that you might hire a VA to do. Yep. So I was essentially like a US based VA making you know, next to nothing. <laughs> so what, ha what happened was like those three or four jobs that I got like, making like between like five, six bucks an hour, um, got me some reviews, got me some there. And from there I just kind of scaled up the pricing. So I've gone, you know, the hourly rate has gone from anywhere from $5 an hour up to $50 an hour doing that kind of work, just slowly working yourself up. And as soon as you have more reviews, it's a lot easier. I wouldn't recommend anyone doing that right now. It's like, yeah, I'm gonna work for five bucks an hour. Um, yeah. But it's a lot easier to start, start off with less. Like if you can afford to work for like, you know, 10, 15, it's gonna be a lot easier to get, you know, even just a job or two or go after like a fixed price, something small, like, hey, we need an SEO audit. We need you to, people sometimes just need access to your tools. It'll be like an agency that's like, hey, we don't actually have SEMrush. So can you actually just pull this report, give us a spreadsheet, here's five bucks. You know, so just something to get a review. And that's all it's about, nothing else, just the reviews at that point. The reviews really help. If you were going to a restaurant, you know, if you've never been there before, you might go to Yelp, you might read the reviews before you look at their menu. Yeah, so it's typically I've stood outside a restaurant, checked the reviews on my phone before I walked in, just to make sure it was a good restaurant. Yeah, like if, if you know that you like sushi and you go to a sushi restaurant, you generally know what they're gonna probably have. So you're gonna check out the reviews, make sure that it's a good place that you wanna go and eat, that people enjoy it. 
Yeah. Um, so it's typically the same process because the people that um, use Upwork don't know where to hire. They don't. They don't want to, you know, search for Boston SEO. They don't really know where they want to find someone. Yeah. So they have very little education generally on SEO, and so the reviews are all that they can really depend on 90% of the time. There are a lot more savvy people that use it, um, but the reviews are like the number one thing you want to have. Okay. Cool. So that's all about just that's where your credibility comes from. Like nothing else is just to look at the reviews. I presume you sound confident and you showed them the process and everything. You yeah, said you so, proposal six hours. Yeah. So the reviews is what kind of gets you invited to those jobs. Okay. They they see that. So uh, the process is someone posts a job. You know, they post a job. They say, "Hey, I need an SEO." Then after that, they get brought to the screen where it says, "Here's candidates that we found yeah. that might be good for you." So then you can hit invite on them and whatnot, and they can see your profile. So they can see part of your profile. They can see your hourly rate. So you need to have something that's going to be um, enticing to them. So if you have like a three to five dollar an hour rate, you're you know people that are looking for you know someone that's a lot more serious, a lot more skillful, probably isn't going to be interested in you. Sure. Um, so you have to play around with it a little bit. I found that like thirty dollars an hour, even though I don't do any hourly work based on there. When they see like the thirty, they think that's okay. enough that they can afford it. Yeah. Um, but yeah. So you know your headline, you have like two lines that they can actually see when they go to invite you. So have something appealing. I have something in there like, hey, you've probably hired people before and not gotten results. Do you want to actually get results? So something like a you know an easy uh, call to action right at the top, they go through your profile. You have your own like information about yourself. Generally, mine's pretty written pretty salesy, and okay. then they can see the reviews. But then when they actually invite me, you can also send them another message, and that's very you know typically pretty tailored to them. Not really cocky, not really salesy. Just like hey, what's your website? You know, let me. Let me help you. Here's a little bit about me. Um, you know, I'm very good at what I do, but I'm not, you know, the best of the best. I'm not, you know, putting everyone else to shame. Just like I want to help you. You know, let's start a conversation. Because once you actually get them in a conversation, then you have a chance. Cool. And is it all just being you being invited, or do you ever apply to any? Um, I occasionally will apply to things, um, but most of the people that are on the platform, 90% of the people that post jobs are not qualified. Yeah. Absolutely. You know, they're like, hey, I want to pay 30 bucks a month for SEO. <laughs> you know, it's not going to happen. Um, yeah. So I, I pretty much just let the reviews come in. It saves me a bunch of time, and I just, I just get emails like, hey, you were invited to this job. I can just check it out. You know, I don't, I'm not interested. I'll just hit deny. Um, yeah, rather than you know, you can spend like half an hour to find like two or three good things to um, have to propose yourself to. Um, so yeah, I don't. You, you can definitely do that. And if I did that, I'm sure I would get a couple more sales. It's just not where I'm spending my time. Fair enough. So if you. Uh I got, we'll break this down in more detail afterwards, but I imagine a lot of people ask this question, is like, how do you go from, like, I go on Upwork, I hire someone for like $5 an hour, mm -hmm. like you were mentioning, like I'm hiring cheap people, and my expectation of Upwork is generally cheap people. So how are you, you said before your average client was, what, 2000 2500 a month? Yeah, so for, uh, so the two markets that I kind of serve right now is I either have just links clients, so just link acquisition, you okay. know, various methods, usually pretty tailored to them. That's anywhere from 500 to 3000 a month. Then okay. the just SEO, like full service SEO, is uh, 2000 to uh, 2500 pretty much. So even at $500 a month, it's not challenging to get five hundred dollar a month, a thousand dollar. You said three thousand dollar a month. How do you get clients like that off of Upwork? Yeah, so it's just a matter of so when you have a good profile. So there's so the people that come there, there there are large, very large companies that will go and use the platform. So okay. there's a lot of SEO agencies, which is another part, of, a large part of where I get my clients, is that there will be SEO agencies that are looking to find people to fulfill for their own clients. There will be uh, large companies that are just like, hey, we just want a bunch of proposals. Because when you go on there, you can see how many people have applied it. It'll be like, you know, 50 to 75 people have tried to apply for this. So then you might get, you know, 20 really good candidates. Yeah. Um, rather than, you know, just trying to find people who are local to you. Um, because, you know, if you, if you try to imagine someone that's, you know, doesn't want to use a platform like that, they're typically going to find someone like in their city, but they're not necessarily need someone that's in their city. They need someone that specializes in you know something specific. Sure. Um, so there's a very large company um, that I don't know if I can technically name. Um, I haven't asked them, but uh, so they're a very large company, uh, venture funded startup for like over twenty five million dollars, and they got into contact with me, and within like one phone call, we closed like three grand a month for just links. Awesome. Yeah. So it's just a matter of they're there. You just need to be patient and build up a good enough profile that they're interested in you. So, when they invite you to a job, right? Mm -hmm. um, you, they see they see the people to invite, and yep. they say it says 
an agency, is it your name, Jared, or is it? Yes, so you can set up a personal profile account or an agency profile account. Okay. I used to have both, so you can, you can, if you have both, you can choose to apply under yourself or as an agency. Yep. I got rid of the agency because I think people like that personal connection, which gotcha. is one of the main things why I haven't branded myself at all. Like my website is just Jared Spook. I don't have a brand name, I've thought about it. I think just that human connection helps a lot of people because they've hired a bunch of agencies generally that are like, you know, ABC marketing or whatever it may be. Yeah. And that one-on-one -on -one connection, I think really makes a difference for a lot you're of people. You're just the guy, you're the expert. Yeah. Absolutely, so they see you, they see your name, they see $30 an hour, right? When um, they invite you to a job, you're gonna apply. Firstly, I'm curious what the message is and how you transition from them thinking they're gonna pay you $30 an hour to you saying, this is an ongoing campaign, it's not hourly, it's $500 a month or whatever. Yeah, sure. So, some people have um, very negative reactions. It's very rare, but I've had some okay. people just like come and be like, hey, you're a scammer because you said $30 an hour. But yeah. so the thing is when, you're, when you create your own listing, when you're the job poster, you get to choose hourly or fixed rate. And typically they don't care. As long as they just, they just typically want to work hourly because there's like a time tracker, take screenshots, so they feel more yeah. confident. And it's just a matter of making them feel confident in you. So, so my process is very similar to, I think, so I think I pretty much stole this from you. It's like your process of like, uh, I think you do like email, phone call, and then a proposal, like yep. a screen share. That's pretty much what I do is they send me an invite. And when I respond, it says, hey, here's about me. Here's my Calendly link. There's my calendar, sets up a time to talk, it gets input in my calendar, 15 minute call. So from there, I have my phone calls. And then on the phone call, you know, you know, typical sales, you know, what are you interested in doing? You know, tell me a little bit more about what you want to do. Here's a little bit about myself. Kind of just like we size each other up. Yeah. And then I said, okay, so this is how I typically operate. You know, so I go through my process. And I'm like, you know, typically I work with clients within this type of budget. I rarely recommend you have at least this amount of budget. Or, and it'll be like, oh, we don't have that. Okay, never mind. Um, you know, you're just not a right fit for me. Or, you know, it's a very easy transition 99.9% .9 of the time, yep. as long as they feel confident. And, you know, it's just a matter of sales at that point. Did you know roughly how many um, that you apply to, that you that they invite you, how many actually will get on the phone with you and book that call? Sure, so I don't have the exact numbers, oh, but I, I, can, I can guess around 70%. Okay. Because, um, so typically the ones that invite me that I'm interested in, that I actually send them a message, will have enough details that I feel confident that they'd be interested in talking to me. And that, then once they find a phone call, so I don't mention, mention pricing at all. Um, sure until we're on the phone. Because it scares a lot of people off if we're just on screens. It's like sending your pricing over a cold email. Yeah, you don't do it, yeah. Yeah, because you won't close them. Because I used to have something like, hey, my minimum is this, and I won't even mention like a minimum anymore just because I feel like if there's just too much of a drop off, even yeah. if they had a higher budget than that. Because even if they have the budget, they still look at it like, oh, I don't want to spend that. Yeah, because I've, reason. <laughs> I've talked to people who uh, I've said like a $1,000 a month minimum, they said, I don't have that kind of budget. Two weeks later, they're like, hey, I've talked to other people, I have a thousand dollars in budget all, all of a sudden because they just yeah. haven't found anyone else. Um, so I think that really plays to your advantage if you're willing to get on the phone call, make that kind of connection with them first before you talk about pricing. And what's the reason for getting on the call? Why can't you just do it at Upwork? Like I know your reason, yeah. but what is the reason you say to them? Yeah, sure. So it's just a matter of you know having that dedicated time and getting on the phone call. So what what I think clients value a lot is making a one-on-one -on -one connection. 100%, you know, yeah. uh, because what, you could be talking to anyone. There's a lot of people that use the platform that are like, I'm based in Florida and they're charged three bucks an hour and they, they really aren't in you know, yeah. English. You can tell that they're you know, based out of you know, somewhere else and that they're just using like a VPN to set up their account so it looks like you know, they're based in the US and whatnot. So, and they've typically hired three, four, five, sometimes even more people that haven't gotten results. And most people just don't take that extra step of getting on the call. So they find that very intriguing, like, hey, what's kind of going on here? Uh, a common method that people use, if you read any like blog posts about how to get like, clients on Upwork, they'll say, in your proposal, send along a custom video. Try that, didn't really work, but just anything that makes that one-on-one -on -one connection with them. So yep. very rarely uh, do people not want to get on a phone call, and it's typically international. Because on like Upwork, right, it's not like, we send the called emails, we send a video because they haven't expressed that much interest, but on Upwork, they're actively saying, hey, I wanna hire an SEO to do this for me, yep. right? Yep. They are looking to hire someone, it's just that not all of them have realistic expectations, but it's a lot easier than, it's almost as, as if you were prospecting for cold email, and out of all the sites that you looked at, three of them had banners on their site saying, we're hiring an SEO. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly, yeah.
Um, I'm curious, what does your profile say? Does it say that you're an SEO specifically or? Um, so you have like a tagline, like your header yep. almost, and then you have like your body where you can put whatever in there. Um, I, I like to play around with them, to be honest. I like okay. literally since I've been here, I think last night I actually rewrote both of them uh, okay, just to see what kind of like gets more, um, you know, sometimes I'll be very like uh, casual, very short, just like, hey, let's talk. Sometimes it'll be very you know cocky, like I'm the best person you'll ever meet that does this. You know, you have to hire me, no one else will get your results. And now it's more like friendly, like, hey, let's just have a conversation. This is what I've done, you know, no obligation, but like a lot more friendly. So I think the actual like headline is just um, link acquisition expert free SEO and PPC audit. So okay. the reason why I have link acquisition expert is because people typically aren't looking for full service SEO to have a good SEO budget. A lot of people that go on that platform are looking for just links because they read how to do this SEO stuff and they heard it. links are the number one ranking factor. So they just want links, links, links. Sure. Um, so that's where, so a lot of my link acquisition only clients are just because of that platform and that's what they're looking for. So I'm able to kind of serve that market, specifically shouting out to them. Yeah. And then I'll also mention like the free audits because anytime I get a website, I send them a video audit. Okay, cool. No, oh, I like them, man. That's really cool. So you're just going out there and basically you created this profile, you have the reviews, so you have the credibility, kind of like building up a blog or anything else, but it's just on this specific platform and then people come to you, right? Yeah, pretty much. It's, it's, a, it's an automated sales funnel that doesn't cost me anything. It's a free platform you, you can pay for. It. It's really not worth paying for unless you're actively um, applying to other jobs listings. Sure. Um, yeah, it's completely automated. It doesn't take a whole lot of time. Um, and the number one thing that's really been helpful for me is the amount of agencies that hire on there. There's four okay. or five agencies that I work with right now um, that do or do not bill me directly and that I work with just because they are like, hey, I'm looking for one person. They get on the phone with me. I'm like, oh yeah, I know I actually have this team. I'll be able to fulfill a lot more than just a single person can. Yeah. And we create these kind of like partnerships. Like a lot of people you know, try to reach out to like these web design agencies or whatnot and work with a lot of other marketing agencies that either just don't fulfill on their marketing, that don't want to fulfill on the SEO that they offer to clients or that they don't offer SEO and that's something that they want to upsell. Interesting, so you said that this doesn't take that much time to like do the Upwork stuff. Yep. So what is it that you spend your time on? Unfortunately, mostly fulfillment. That's okay. probably my number one mistake is that th for a long time, I just wanted to freelance and I, yeah, I was like, you know, building a whole mm -hmm. business, that's a scary thing to what do. What was your goal, by the way, when you started that? Make money. <laughs> that is, if really, I didn't have, I'm a very go with the flow type person. And I just wanted money. Uh, I didn't grow up with a lot of it. So I was like, I can actually do something okay. here. I can actually make something of myself. Um, so yeah, so it was just like freelancing, make as much money as I can. I was freelancing, making a solid, you know, five grand a month at 18, 19 at that time. Nice. Um, and then eventually I just wanted to kind of do a different thing. But because I was doing all the technical work, um, you know, if, if you read, uh, I know you've read the e-myth, yeah. uh, I was just the technician still pretty much just that technician doing a lot of the film myself. So now I'm trying to work on processes a lot more to kind of take myself out of that. But unfortunately, 90% of my day is just actually doing the work and then, you know, fulfilling, cl managing clients with like communication um, and then also putting a lot more time in setting up processes so I can, um, you know, eventually hire a solid team. I have some people that work for me kind of like on, on an as needed basis, very like they already know how to do that skill. Yeah. Just so I don't have to, you know, worry about actually training people, but my number one mistake I feel is though is not caring about processes early enough and doing all the work myself. You have a lot of time, man. <laughs> no, that's really fascinating. Um, it's cool that you've got like the automated, like the client acquisition side, you yeah. don't, it kind of just happens, right? Like obviously you have to get on the phone with them. Yeah, but. Um, and so what some clients, if they watch this, aren't gonna like, but everything is pretty much automated up Upwork because I just have Google Doc files that when they invite me, copy and paste. That's it. So it literally takes me when they invite me to things, okay. two seconds. And then Ari has my calendar link in there and then I just see which ones are you staying on my calendar. You don't personalize it at all? Or? I used to. Um, then I just found I didn't need to. I'm still really? getting a really good response rate because I'm very selective in who I actually work with. Um, so like the only personalization I'll do is if they put their name in there anywhere. You know, I'll be like, hey, John, hey, Mark, whatever, yeah. if their name is in there. Um, but typically, I have uh, different files for anything. Like, are the, is it just like a general invite where I'm not sure they need something specific? If it's just like, hey, we need SEO on our website. I have one just for agencies. I have one just for link acquisition, one for full service SEO. So I have a different uh, uh, swap files or whatever you want to call them, where I just copy and paste. Then they get that, they read that. If they're interested in me, they set up a Calendly 
invite? Yep. And then I get on the phone with them. So really, between getting invited to them as a prospect and getting them on the phone takes me 10 seconds of work. Why did you have a VA do this and just like sit back and just have them apply for the jobs and just win you basically? You just jump on the phone when it, like yeah. it gets booked in your calendar. I think part of it is just fear that they're gonna screw up and it's gonna reflect poorly on me or you know, just cause I, like the VAs that I do, I don't have them touch anything on the client's website. Even like setting up like Google Analytics, even though it's very straightforward, yeah. I'm just very, you know, I guess I'm just very anal about it. Like I would, wouldn't want to hurt a client's business. I wouldn't want someone to like, you know, it, it's an unneeded fear. Sure, because you also you said it's like um, you're still working on the systems right for the fulfillment, yeah. but especially the the applications and stuff like that's all a template. Yeah. So you could, I guess. Yeah, yeah that's definitely steps. something that <laughs> I should think about a lot more, and it's honestly something I hadn't think about uh, actually hiring someone else to do because my focus has very been on like the fulfillment and okay. like. So my, I guess, tentative plan would be like, you know, get those processes out, hire people for those processes, and then kind of move on to being like a manager until I figure out the processes for management that I have hired the right people, and then hire someone to, you know, be that manager. Yeah. Uh, but right now, what I was thinking, like even on the car ride over here, is that really I should just hire, I should hire someone based in the states that's near where I am. I have my own office space. Um, it's just, just you. Uh, my fiance also has her own thing that she does okay. um, some e-commerce actual products. It's 2,500 awesome. square feet, more than enough room for just me. So she has her own thing that she does there. But yeah, I've been kind of playing around with the idea. If I hire a manager it's in my office, whatever, we can work very closely and have them manage all this kind of stuff, work together to set up processes, I think it would streamline communication. It's just a very scary step for me to be able to take to actually like, hire people. It is a huge step, yeah. Like I only registered as an LLC this year. Like okay. two, three months ago, because it was like this fear, like oh, you know, that's a that's a big step, even though there really like nothing changed. It was just like the men, the mentality behind it. That's cool though. You have a, a good setup, right? You're going out there, you're acquiring the clients. It's just the fulfillment now, which is like you have goals with that, like to streamline this. And do you plan on building a team? Is that like I know you're a little bit worried about it, but is that like the goal next? Yeah. So so the goal right now is to be able to build a team so that I can scale. Um, okay. One of the things I've gotten away from is having revenue goals because I think that's just way too much focus on money. I think, you know, everyone's like, hey, I want to hit 10K a month. And then when I was doing that, I would take on a lot of bad clients just because they were like, hey, I'm going to sure. throw you 1,500 a month. I'd be like, wow, that's like what, like, like the bigger guys are giving me. I'll definitely take that on a nightmare of a campaign. It pretty much just falls apart. Way too much time on my hands to kind of like handle that kind of stuff. So, so I've been focusing on more like business goals. So right now the business goal is to grow a team. There's no like set revenue of what I need to make for that. So. Right now, I really think that I want an in-house team or local team that we can you know, rent out a co-working space or whatever. Like, I don't need to keep the office that I have right now. Um, yeah, I, I think what I want- What is the office for? What's the, what's the, sorry, cutting you off. What's the, what's the office for? What's the, the reason in? Sure, so as being 20, I still live with my parents. You know, they, Smart. Yeah, they've been very accommodating. So before I got this office, I got it in uh, February. Yeah, February of this year, I got the office. And so I was just working out of my bedroom in like a little corner. Like I have like an L-shaped desk and that was my entire work area. <laughs> Things were just piling up. You still around. do four laptops? Um, three screens. So I always <laughs> work with a shit ton of screens. So I have it's like cool. a 36 inch Samsung TV that I was using as a dual screen for my uh, Mac. So I would have that big screen, the Mac over here, then a tablet, and yep. then my phone would always be on something as well. So just crazy amount of screens. Um, but yeah, I was just working out of this very little space, very cramped. I looked at one office space, it was 500 square feet, 500 a month, which is pretty average above a dollar a square foot. And then I found this place that I'm in right now, which is like, uh, like kind of like underground, like garden level. And so, so it's cheaper because it's not a storefront, 2,500 square feet, 900 a month. Nice. Yeah. So there was no way I was passing that up. So, you know, it was, it was a, it was a big move and now I have like, there's like two, two like private offices in the actual office and then there's like a common area. So like. I have like 500 square feet of myself that I just use. Okay. And then I have this whole extra space. I could hire like half a dozen people and I'll have them in that space. Is that because you want to expand the team or is it also because like you get more focus? Like yeah, I, so part of it was I was a lot more focused when I'm, when I'm there, I am working, that yeah. is all I'm doing. You know, my cats aren't distracting me, my knocking over <laughs> shit all the time. You know, I don't have to worry about, uh, you know, people coming and going in the house all the time. It was just, you know, I'm here, I am working because I work like crazy amount of hours. Like a 12 hour day is a short day for me. So, uh, yeah, it, it we'll was nice to that. <laughs> it was nice to have my own space. It was nice to. It was a big step for me. I felt like, you know, I was really making it. But what really sucked is as soon as I got the place, I lost five grand a month in clients in two weeks of signing the lease. 
Um, granted, both those clients are clients I shouldn't have taken in the first place. It was just because I was very money driven at the time. And I think that's sure. one of the reasons that I was only back again. I have my own space, kind of playing around with the idea about hiring a, a local team and then also having a, a VA based team that does the, uh, you know, some of the smaller stuff and having the US based team be more of like the managers and like the overseers of the um, you know, outsourcing, wherever they may be. Okay. So you said you did what, 12 hours a day? Yeah, on a short day, yeah. What do you do? Like Cause so they're not all 12 productive hours. Okay, that's, that's okay. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> so that's the, uh, that's the uh, important thing there. So I have, um, I have ADHD. So what's nice is when I'm focusing on work, I can work, but when I'm unfocused on work, I cannot focus on it. So sometimes I'll just find myself walking around in circles for like half an hour. <laughs> so, that's, so that's one of the issues that I have. Um, okay. But because I do so much of my own fulfillment, it's you know anything under like actually working for the 10 hours is um isn't reasonable which really sucks but i also really enjoy it like i still get up every day and like you know pumped to get doing what i'm doing yes there are some days where i completely hate what i'm doing and <laughs> i feel like like i like i screwed up from the way i'm doing things but you know most days it's, you know i wake up and i get jump right into it there's days that i'll stay at the office all night i'll work all night i'll sleep for three hours i'll wake up i'll start my meetings and i'll just continue on that work day um it's not something that I love doing that I love doing all the time, but I'm amped up enough about what I'm doing, you know, that I'm able to continue to do it. You know, I don't have the mentality of Gary V, uh, where I can just, you know, keep going 24 hours a day. Yeah. Um, but yeah, but I, I enjoy what I'm doing, so I'm able to do that without, you know, hating myself. What is it like you love and hate actually about like this business, like what it is you're doing? I, I really love business development is the thing. Okay. So ever since I was eight, I wanted to have my own business. You know, when I would, I would go online to places like Congregate and like Armor Games, like, I, mean, I would always play business tycoons. Like, oh yeah, I'm building this big thing. It's like <laughs> games are like pretty much impossible I remember to the lose. games, yeah. yeah. Um, but like, oh yeah, I took this lemonade stand that was making 25 cents and now I'm a millionaire. <laughs> Just like some stupid things like that. I've always had an interest in it. When I was working for other businesses, I was always trying to do my own freelancing stuff. Sure. And when I was working for other agencies, I was always trying to like redefine how they're doing things to the point where I was like, you know, I shouldn't, you know, this is how they want to do things. This is fine. But I always want to do things different. So really into just growing something on my own, like uh, two weeks ago was like a hundred hour plus work week because I restructured everything that I do. I made things more transparent for clients. I really just took it like, how do I want to be portrayed uh, by clients? How do I want other uh, people in the industry to know me by, know my processes by? And I just restructured sure. everything and I loved every single minute of it and you know the fulfillment side of things is where I'm starting to lose a lot of interest you know, it'll be like I can see that <laughs> it'll be like you know I do two three pages on a website for their on page and then after that like you know this is fun for the first couple pages but this is a 2,000 page website I really don't want to sit here for the next three weeks and do this yeah um, yeah so right now like we were saying before the goal is that slowly reduce the fulfillment side then you can like what you sound it sounds like you enjoy like the business development like scaling up which is building a team and yep. actually doing all that stuff. Yeah, so I'm slowly working on processes. Um, so the, with it, the, the way that I have my processes right now is that I um, so I have, I just closed three clients within the past week. So they're all fresh, no work has been awesome. done on them. So what's been really nice is that I took a spreadsheet. Every, every single step that I'm gonna do for their campaigns is already marked out. So then I also have a column that's just for you know, an SOP link. So I'm just taking a Google Doc, and like, let's say setting up a Google Analytics. I'll do it on one site, and then I'll, I'll just make bullet points. You know, add tracking code to website, you know, set up conversion tracking, whatever I'm doing. Then for the next one, I'll get more detailed. Be like, okay, you know, check if they already have Google Analytics. If not, these are the exact steps to set up an account. You know, this is the account logins. Um, and just get more and more granular, just so I'm sure. not sitting there, you know, because you can take like an hour writing up an SOP for something simple, because if you're <laughs> screenshots and everything. Yeah. So just kind of very slowly working on it, but doing it enough times that I can see like, oh, I'm actually missing this step because I had to do it for three times for the same clients. You know, it's just doing something where I was actually making a new spreadsheet and importing like a CSV into it, but I'm like, oh, I forgot to mention that in the SOP, but because I just wrote that SOP and I'm actually doing it for the second time in a row, I can see what I'm kind of missing and get more and more like any time that there's nothing that's outside of like exactly what's on the document, I'm able to add it in. So that's what I'm kind of like using these three clients for. Um, you know. Okay. Yeah. That makes sense. So you're figuring out all the, the systems that like that now so you can later on bring someone else in. So rather than just having like a, a random service, we do this and this and this and this, it's yep. very systematic. Yep. Is that right? From yeah. day one to day 
the end, like they follow this progress. Yeah, pretty much. One of my things early on was when I was deciding, you know, where do I want my position to be in the industry? You know, what kind of tactics do I want to use? What I want to be known for? I, one of the big things I had against a lot of agencies that I work with is they had very, you know, like factory line workflows for their SOPs. It would be like, yeah. it doesn't matter, you know, if they weren't niched down at all. You know, a dentist in Miami gets the same thing as a roofer in Boston, or okay. it, you know, as long as they have the same budget, or if they niche down, it'll be, you know, you know, a, a law firm in Miami gets the same thing as the same type of law firm in Boston, even though those two companies may have different goals. Sure. So my thing at first was I want to be fully custom, you know, what do you need? I want to customize everything you, but the issue there is that you have to, if you want to build a team for that, you have to be paying people like six figures a year. You have to have those very high level people because everything's going to be different, you know, most of the time. Um, and so that sure. was a big issue that I was finding where I was trying to create SOPs for it. I'm like, but everything I do is very different. There'll be things all the time that I would only do once for this one client, never do again. Um, so now I'm, I, I kind of just like focus on like just ROI now and working with business goals, but still having like, this is what pretty much everyone needs. Here's some things that people don't always need, like content marketing. It's something I've been getting into a lot more of. Okay. Like I have one client going to be hitting content marketing a lot. So I have SOPs for that, but not every client's going to get that because not, not every client needs that. Um, so oh, still yeah. have a lot of flexibility, but not to the point where it's impossible to scale. It's not fixed. It's yeah. just, it's kind of. It's like, like puzzle pieces. If this is needed. Yeah, exactly. Puzzle pieces is yep. much better. That, yeah, he said it better than I did. Okay, interesting. Is there any sort of advice you would give someone that's like maybe 19, 20, or even older, it doesn't matter, or younger, it doesn't, either way, that is starting out and trying to get into like client SEO and build up an agency. And a lot of these guys are like really struggling to get like paying clients to just start out. Is there any advice you have for those people specifically? Yeah, so I think, I think there's only two points I could really make that I think would really um, drive home for them is look at the opposite side of the table. So okay. one of the things that really helped me, um, especially let's say on, uh, on Upwork, I created a client account. I learned the process. What do they have to go through? What do they see when they're trying to hire someone? What is it like for them? Yeah. What are the type of proposals that they're getting? What are people saying to them? I was able to craft my proposals. I was like, okay, 30% just crap. You, you have to get in there with a couple. Did you actually call up agencies or something and like pretend to be a client? Or how did you see that? Yeah, so, it was more just, so some of it's just like, hey, talking to people, like, hey, what did you kind of experience? Did you get like these cold emails? Like even sure. like my, the cold emails that I get like all the time, like, hey, we can do your SEO for your site. You know, just analyzing those, okay, what are these people all doing that is completely crap? Like what makes it obvious just from like the subject line that they're just like some spammer. Yeah. Um, and like, even like on Upwork, these polls that you're getting, this is what's crap. Um, you kind of identify trends. Um, just understand what's kind of happening to the other side of the table. So you're able to set yourself aside. You're able to be unique. Uh, you know, even even connect with other people that are doing what you're doing. If you're trying to do cold email, connect with other people that are doing cold email because they've already done some various testing. Um, like um, Gabriel, who I can't remember his name. Um, he has like his own cold email course. He's in the Lions Hill group. The, the tall, skinny guy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I I feel bad. I can't remember his last name. Um, but you know, like he does a ton of cold email stuff. He has a great great uh, videos out there. Like connecting with someone like him just to. You know, it, you know, don't like mooch off him and expect to get everything from him, but just connect with people that are doing that. So if you're starting Absolutely, to get into yeah. that, you know, learn that. So learn the other side of the table, connect with people. Um, you don't want to start from scratch. And the other thing is just putting in the hours. Do um, you have to do 12 hours a day there? No, but put in enough to, you know, it, it's going to work. You know, if you're sending cold emails, you know, it's, it's going to be very discouraging if someone sends 50 and they get two clients out of it. And if you've sent 300 and you haven't even gotten a response. Sure. But it's going to work at some point for you. You just yeah. have to, you know, you have to you know, figure out what's going wrong. Don't just give up. If, if you're not getting, you know, if you're tracking it, if you're not getting opens, change your subject line, play around with those. If you're getting calls, but you're not closing people on proposals, change up your proposal. Put in the hours to actually make a difference. Don't just like, you know, send 300 emails and then not get anything from it. And I don't want you to have to send 3,000 emails and get nothing yeah. from it. At that point, you screwed up by not hmm. fix, fixing whatever your issue, underlying issue was. Of course. Um, you know, put in the hours to actually make a difference wherever you had to put those hours into. And question for you, do you actually enjoy working 12 hours a day? Like, what would your ideal like setup be or work life? Yeah, so I have, I have no issue working this amount of hours. I'd like to really, kind of have a better schedule for my like work-life balance because it's just pretty much non-existent <laughs> at this point. It's just, you know, work. <laughs> We're in Thailand at least now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know. Yeah, so it's, it's, it's really cool to be able to kind of do this stuff. I'm still working the entire time here. I'd love to be able to kind of do that working a lot less. Um, so yeah, putting, in, putting in the hours is fine, um, but putting them in where you need to 
is the right place. Like if I, if from the start, if I had only put the hours into the right place, which would be get a client or two, figure yeah. out processes, you know, get enough clients that you can live off of, figure out your processes, then hire pretty much right away. I'd be able to manage to work six hours a day. I'd still probably put in 10 to 12. Yeah, okay. So I think you already went through like what you're looking to achieve now, which is the next steps, which is like building up the team and everything like that. Have you ever had, like you hit 20K recurring very recently, right? Yes. Have you ever had any big sort of realizations from getting to like this next level, or even just the past few months as it's got to, it's grown more and more, probably bigger than you originally thought it would? Sure. Um, that fulfillment doesn't matter, <laughs> which, which sucks for <laughs> someone that spends 80% of their time on that. Um, but sales is all, is all that matters. If you look at any really large agency, how they grow to like $100 million a year and they consistently don't get results, it's because they have like a 30, 40 person sales team. That's where they invest all the time. It doesn't matter how good of an SEO you are, how good of a social media marketer you are, if you can't get clients in the first place. So I, I really encourage people to work, spend a lot more time on learning sales. Like I'm trying to go through like various sales books like Zig Ziglar and um, you know, uh, sales, sorry, not sales.io, it's close.io, I think it's close.io. Okay. Um, you know, they have a great sales blog and they also have a sales SaaS product that I've been looking into a little bit, um, but just, you know, Sale, sales is what really matters, and understanding that you know, 10K isn't 10K, you have business expenses. It, you're gonna have a lot easier of a life freelancing than you are as an agency. You, there's a lot more commitment, there's a lot more you have to worry about if yeah. you're trying to build. I think that you know, it's very uh, nostalgic, and it's very talked up to you know, be this business owner, travel the world, do no work, hire people that do all this work, you know, be Ty Lopez. Um, <laughs> But you know, figure out what you want to do. You might just want to freelance. You might want to have an agency. You you know, you might want to service just one particular market. Figure out what you want to do, and don't just do things because other people talk it up and it looks cool. Absolutely, um, I think that's a good final thought to kind of wrap it up on. That's some cool advice. Um, you're doing pretty well, man. Um, so yeah, congrats on all the the free clients in the last week. Is it? <laughs> yeah. Yep. Three clients closed in the past uh, seven days. That's awesome. And getting 20k. When did you hit that? Wednesday. Yeah, I hit that uh, Tuesday night, Tuesday I think, night, and okay. honestly, I'm dropping it down to 15 when I get home. Because? Uh, some clients I just shouldn't have taken on in the first place, some clients I've, I've outgrown, uh, that I, I won't be able to scale having them, it's, it's not going anywhere. Okay, um, like so it's just take fun. a step backwards so you can go yep. forward even more. Yep, trying to not focus on money as much as I have in the past, Okay. because uh, I think you just take a lot of wrong directions doing that. Okay, cool man, I appreciate you joining me, it's been really yeah, awesome. I enjoyed being here. Thanks for coming.